empezando en unos momentos. Gracias. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get started. So again, this is the four year career plan meeting. Um, a lot of the information covered today is uh, mostly probably going to be geared towards our eighth grade students, but it is very beneficial for our seventh grade parents to kind of listen in because it's never too early to start preparing them for eighth grade and for high school. Uh, we do have the other counselors on the call, so they will be monitoring the chat while I'm doing the presentation. So you feel free to, you can post your questions in the chat and we have Ms. Peters and Mr. Villarreal who will re, um, they'll respond to you as they can. Do you want me to translate that part? So um, the Spanish translations are, should be shown on the screen as I speak. Got it, okay. Hopefully everyone can see the Spanish translations. Look like it stopped. All right, so let's uh, meet the counselors. So the first one listed, and we're listed by Alpha. Um, the students are assigned to us by their last names. So I'm Mr. Sinet. I have last names A through F and I through K. And I'm also your parent facilitator for this school year. In the middle, we have Mr. Villarreal. He has last names G through H and L through N. Also, we have the lovely Ms. Peters, and she has students whose last names are O through Z. So these are your counselors at North Shore Middle School. Today, we will be talking about credits, um, endorsements, and then graduation requirements. And the reason why I say it's also good for our seventh grade parents to listen in on this call is because we do have some seventh graders taking high school credit classes. So this meeting is really to educate parents about how credits work and then how, also about endorsements. It's, like I said, it's never too early to start talking to your child about their career path. What is it that they propose to want to do after high school because when we enter in ninth grade we start tailoring those classes based on their based on their interests and then we're going to talk about graduation requirements so that way everyone knows like what is the, what is required for students to graduate with galena park isd so first i want to start off with what is a credit so a credit is a point that students earn when they pass a high school course. Typically the credits are earned after each semester and you have to have a passing grade and per TEA, attendance has to be 90% or higher for that course. So each semester students can earn um, half a credit and then for each semester and then at the end of the school year, they would have earned one full credit for a course. So a credit is just a point that you earn or half a point that you earn whenever you pass a high school course. High school credits may be earned in middle school. So for example, in middle school, students are able to take Spanish one, Spanish two. We also have a Spanish for native speakers. We have digital art and animation, digital design, principles of human services, and then touch data entry. The only classes that are available for our seven graders, to, um, high school credit classes available for seven graders are going to be the digital design, which is where they're learning um, computer applications such as photo, such as Photoshop. And then we also have touch data entry, which is a keyboarding and data entry class. Those two are offered to our seven graders. And then all the other classes, the Spanish, digital art, animation, principles of human services, those are offered to our um, eighth graders. Okay. 
So now that we've talked about credits, let's talk about what are endorsements. So an endorsement is going to be a group of electives that allows the student to learn more about their career interests. And this is why it's important that students know like what their career interest is going to be entering high school because like I stated earlier, once they get into ninth grade, the elective courses are going to be based on what they choose as an endorsement, what their career choice is going to be. And it makes high school a lot more enjoyable when students are taking electives about things that they're interested in versus classes that, you know, they're just um, placed in. So when we're talking about endorsement, you want to think about just a group of electives that students are going to be taking that's going to get them prepared for transitioning into adulthood. There are five endorsements. We have STEM, Business and Industry, Arts and Humanities, and Public Services. And then also there's multidisciplinary studies, which is um, for students who graduate with more than one endorsement. And I'm going to explain that a little later in the presentation. So first, let's look at STEM, which stands for Science, technology, engineering, and advanced mathematics. The, uh, the career pathways for STEM, um, these are careers that students, like they want to be an engineer, if they're interested in becoming a math teacher, a science teacher, or a scientist, then the student may want to choose STEM as an endorsement choice. Again, STEM stands for science, technology, engineering, and advanced mathematics. So the next endorsement is going to be business and industry. And so some careers that you can give um, with the endorsement with business and industry would be if they want to be an agriculture teacher, audio video technician, broadcast technician, newspaper editor, journalist, a welder, construction worker, auto mechanic, payroll manager, or restaurant manager. Next, we have public services and public services. The careers associated with this endorsement would be a teacher, dietitian, FBI agent, nurse, doctor, lawyer, pharmacist, police officer, athletic trainer, or a chef. And the next one, we have arts and humanities. And so some of the career choices with, that falls under the arts and humanities would be a choreographer, mus musician, composer, a director of music, theater manager, music teacher, or a performer. And then, of course, like I said before, we have multidisciplinary studies. And so this is for students who are graduating with more than one endorsement. So students can graduate with STEM and arts and humanities, or they can have business and industry and arts and humanities. So when you're graduating with multiple endorsements, and most students have an opportunity to graduate with more than one endorsement, that's when it becomes multidisciplinary studies, meaning that they're start studying more than one endorsement. All right, so now we're going to move on to college and career preparation. So at this time, all of our eighth grade students have already completed their interest inventory and they have already selected their endorsement. Um, students will meet with their counselor to receive their endorsement letters before the end of the school year. We have not received the letters as of yet from the district, but we will get them and we will meet with each student individually to give them their endorsement letter. Yeah. This endorsement letter, it gives the parent and the student an opportunity to either agree with, their, with the endorsement choice that they've made, or you can make a change. But like I stated, at this point, all of the eighth grade students have already chosen their endorsements for high school. And those who are absent on high school registration days, the counselors, we are still calling in those students for them to select their endorsement choices. Parents, you'll be notified of the choices when we send the endorsement letters home. And that's why one of the reasons why we want to have this meeting is to let you know ahead of time to be expecting the letter to come on sometime this semester. It is important that all the endorsement letters have to be signed by both the parent and the students, and it has to return back to the counselors. Okay. 
So this is just an example of how the endorsement letter looks. Um, it'll have the date at the top and it'll say, dear parent of, and it has a student name and ID. And it says, today your child was introduced to the high school plan according to House Bill 5 as required Incoming freshmen and their parents must select one or more of the five graduation endorsements. And then it says, based on the information from your child, your child has been has chosen, and it, it will list the endorsement that they have chosen, whether it's business and industry, STEM, public service, or arts and humanities. And then you have three options. The first option is going to be, yes, my child and I, we agree with the endorsement selection above, and we, and we do not wish to add any others at this time. Then the second option is going to be, yes, we agree with the endorsement selection above, but we want to add another one as well. And then the third option that you will see on the letter is going to say, no, we do not agree with the endorsement selection above, and we would like to change to the following endorsements. And you would just check off the ones that you want to change it to. There will be a place at the bottom of the form for the student to sign and the parent to sign, and then that has to be returned back to the counselor. And then we will make um, those changes or we will let the high school know of the changes that you want to make if there's any changes in the endorsement. So now we're gonna kind of move on to graduation requirements. Um, we're gonna talk about required credits, endorsement credits, and then end of course exams. One second. Okay. So our current eighth graders are going to be the class of 2027. And so when we're thinking about the foundation high school plan, there are three levels to the graduation plan. There's the foundation, which is 22 credits. Then we have the foundation with the endorsement, which is 26 credits. And then there's the distinguished achievement, which is um, the foundation with the endorsement plus students who are taking algebra two. Students will have an opportunity to earn performance acknowledgments, which I'm going to share those later. And then the student and parent have to specify in writing which endorsement the student intends to earn when entering the ninth grade. So that's the purpose of the endorsement letters that's going to be sent home um, sometime this semester. Once we get those from the district, then we we'll start meeting with the eighth graders one-on-one -on -one and sending them home. So please expect that your child, if you're an eighth grade, if, you're, if you have a student who's in eighth grade, please expect that um, an endorsement letter will come home before the end of the school year. All right, so the first one that I talked about was the foundation with no endorsement. Um, this plan is only 22 credits. However, I must, let, I must let you know that this plan is only, only reserved for special populations in their junior or senior year and with parent permission. So this foundation with no endorsement, again, is only reserved for special populations in their junior or senior year with parent permission. Once the student gets to their junior or senior year, that high school counselor will be getting in contact with you uh, if this plan applies to your, to your student, to your child. Now, the next one is a level two, and this is where most of the students fall, the foundation plan with an endorsement. This one is 26 credits. And you see the endorsements here, you have STEM for science, technology, engineering, and advanced mathematics. Then you have business and industry, arts and humanities, public services, and then multidisciplinary studies. So all eighth graders entering into ninth grade are gonna be selected for the foundation plan with an endorsement. You know, you really want your student, your child to graduate with some type of endorsement, something that's gonna give them um, some classes that's gonna to lead to their career choice for after high school. And then the third level we have is distinguished achievement. So this is for students who complete the foundation plan with, with at least one endorsement and algebra two. And then they, this, they would get the distinguished achievement. So again, this one is where you're taking the foundation plan with at least one endorsement, plus the student has to also take algebra two. Now, 
it is important for me to note that only students only students um, completing the distinguished level and graduating in the top 10% of their class will be eligible for college admission under the top 10% automatic admission law. And so what that means is um, there's a law that if students graduate in the top 10% of their class, and if they're also taking algebra two and get at least one endorsement with a foundation plan, then they will automatically be accepted any College, uni college or university in the state of Texas. So um, eight counselors, we have been talking with our students here that, who are taking high school credit classes and kind of encouraging them, you know, do the best that you can. You know, don't just try to pass for 70s to 80s, get an A because you want to get the highest grade possible in your high school credit classes. So that way your GPA will be as high as it can be. And of course, you know, it's, it's wonderful if, you, if your child can get the top 10% and get the distinguished level and be accepted to any college in the state of Texas. But that is that is what the 10% automatic admission law is talking about. Um, they have to graduate the top 10% and they have to be at the distinguished level, which is the foundation plan with one endorsement and algebra two. All right, so next we're going to start talking about graduation requirements. And as you see, I have 26 credits because that's the minimum that's the minimum amount of credits that students need in order to graduate. Again, the one that I talked about that was 22 credits is only reserved for special populations, but the ninth, the junior or senior counselor will contact the parents if that applies to you. So moving from middle school to high school. Um, here in middle school, we have A days and B days, and the schedule is kind of like the same. Um, one day, students go to periods one, two, three, and four, and then on B days, they go to periods five, six, seven, and eight. The high school has a, a very similar schedule where one day is periods one through four, and then another day is going to be the class periods five through eight. Um, when we talked about credits earlier, I mentioned Credits are earned at the end of each semester. And again, the student has to be passing and has to have the attendance percentage. It has to be 90% or higher in order to earn the credit for the class. Students can earn up to four credits each semester. And so um, when you look at it, there's four credits times eight semesters in high school. Students can actually graduate with up to 32 credits. However, the minimum of 26 is required to graduate. So the foundation plan with one endorsement, the minimum is 26. But students have an opportunity to graduate with up to 32 credits. So that means that if Galena Park, we put our students in position to graduate with more than one endorsement by the time they finish high school, which makes them more prepared and ready going into adulthood, into their careers, or whatever um, choice they choose. Again, students must attend class at least 90% of the days that the class is offered in order to earn credit. So if your student is missing more than six absences, you know, it can, re it can result in loss of credit. And that also applies to middle school as well. Okay, the attendance rule that's from Texas Education Agency from TEA. Students have to be in class 90% of the time that the class is offered. So six absences or more, they can potentially lose credit for the class. It would be a shame for a student to get a 90 or 100 in the class but lose credit because of attendance. So we really encourage students to come to school as much as they can. Um, one thing I do want to note is about sponsored approved courses. So sponsored approved courses, students will not be placed into things like sports, drill team, band, choir, unless they are on the, the sponsors list. Um, it won't be put on their schedule until a roster is received from the sponsor. The sponsor meaning like going into high school, if they have to be, they're in band already in middle school, they need to already be letting the band teacher know that they're interested in continuing on to a marching band. And then that band direct, um, that band teacher will submit their name on the list so to put them in band for the next year. Same thing with choir and same thing with sports. The coaches will send the high school counselors a list of athletes to place in those different sports. Here's just a snapshot of the graduation requirements. So in the 
The first column shows the subject areas, the English, math, science, social studies, foreign language. Um, when you look at foreign language, there's a two next to it. In order to graduate from high school, every student must have two years of the same foreign language. So if they start taking Spanish one in eighth grade, in ninth grade, they need to take Spanish two. They can do Spanish one and then uh, switch and go to French one. So in Galena Park, we do offer two foreign languages. We offer Spanish and French. Spanish is only offered at the middle school level. We do offer Spanish one for our eighth grade students, but then once they get into ninth grade, if they're not in, if they're not in Spanish, then they can choose to take French. But just know that every student has to have two years of the same foreign language before they graduate high school. We highly encourage most of our eighth graders to try to get their first year done while they're here with us, because it just makes it easier for them just to take Spanish too. And then another thing I want to mention with foreign language. Uh, that we also share with our students. Although you only have to have two years of the same foreign language, you do have an opportunity to continue on. You can take Spanish three, you can take Spanish four. The good thing about that, once you get to Spanish three, Spanish four, those are considered advanced placement classes. So you take Spanish three, you take Spanish four, you pass those classes. When you take advanced placement classes, that even shoots your grade point average even higher. In addition to that, let's say I'm a student and I'm choosing business and industry as my endorsement, but if I'm taking Spanish uh, one, I take Spanish two, I take Spanish three, and I take Spanish four, I'm automatically going to also get the arts and humanities endorsement. So it, it prepares me to get two endorsements instead of one. So that's the, one of the things that I like, and I kind of explained that to a lot of our students to let them know the different opportunities that they have to get multiple endorsements. Um, so you'll see English, uh, four credits, that's four years, math, three, science, three credits, social studies, three, foreign language, two, fine arts, one. Physical, ed physical education one and then electives five and that totals 22 but that does not rec that does not include the courses that they have to take for their endorsements so when you add the additional credits needed for your endorsements that's how it becomes 26 so you have 22 foundation credits plus your four endorsement credits and that's why it's a minimum of 26 credits So in high school, students have to pass their end of course exams, and this is required for graduation. So in ninth grade, the students will take the English one, algebra one, and biology end of course exams. In 10th grade, students will take English two, end of course exam. And then in the 11th grade, students take their US history end of course exam, again, all high school students have to pass these end of course exams in order to graduate. So if, you're, if your child takes um, the English one, the algebra one and the biology in the course exam and they're not successful the first year in, in ninth grade, then the counselors will give them another opportunity the next, the next year to take it because they want them to, they need to choose, they need to pass all of those end of course exams before they graduate. They're, they're, this is just a requirement. So again, for ninth grade, uh, students will be taking three in the course exams. They'll take their English one, their algebra one, and their um, biology. And then 10th grade, they'll take, um, they'll just take one, which is English two. 11th grade, they'll just take one, which is US history. Um, if you have any eighth graders who are in advanced math who are taking algebra this year in eighth grade, they will take their in the course algebra one exam this year. All right, so now we're going to talk about performing acknowledgements. So to achieve outstanding performance, um, stu students have to be successful in a dual credit course. Uh, 
and dual credit starts in 10th grade. So we have been speaking with students because we have already completed the recruitment and registrations already for early college. But for some students who wanted to, who still want the traditional high school route, dual credit will be available starting in 10th grade. So they would definitely would need to speak with their counselors in high school if they're interested in dual credit. Um, unfortunately, middle school counselors, we don't have the information about that because um, it doesn't start to 10th grade. So it's kind of like too early for us. We can mention it to them, but we don't have the information to kind of go into details. So if that's something that your child is interested in, please, please, please make sure that when they're meeting with their counselors, because each student is going to meet with their counselor next year, probably during the first semester, they need to let them know about um, if they're interested in the dual credit. Another way to get a performance and performance acknowledgement is if they're in a bil bilingualism or a biliteracy class um, on an AP test. Also, if they if they do well on the PSAT, the SAT, or the ACT, and then also if they earn a nationally or internationally recognized business or industry certification or license. So all of these things happen in high school, but we want to make you aware of this now, because now is the time to start having these conversations with your eighth graders. These next few months are going to go by very fast, and before you know it, they're already freshmen in high school. And then once they're freshmen in high school, those four years are going to go by really, really fast, and you're going to find yourself like, oh my God, where did these four years go? I'm already planning for prom, for graduation. So it's better to start having these conversations with them now and let them know all the opportunities that are available within the district. Um, so each completed performance acknowledgement will be reflected on their transcript when they graduate. So this, um, this picture just kind of shows how the um, graduation works. It starts at the bottom with just having a, a foundation plan. Then you have your endorsements. Then you get your distinguished. Remember, distinguished were the ones who have the foundation plan with the endorsement, plus they're taking algebra two. And then you have the performance acknowledgments, which is the ones I just mentioned on the previous slide. So um, if you have any questions, I'm going to open the floor. I just um, just want to kind of just say, I know it's a lot of people on the call. We have like 30, 35. So as you, if you hear someone asking a question, we just ask them to stay muted so that way we can hear one question at a time. Or feel free again to place your uh, questions in the chat. But if you're unsure of which endorsement your child should take, just explore with them, talk to them about what is their interest, have these conversations with your, with your child, because you want to make sure that they are choosing the right endorsement. And we tell them, don't choose an endorsement just because your friend chose it, you know, because nine times out of 10, you're not going to be in the same class with them next year, because all of the Everybody comes back together in ninth grade, but you want to make sure that students are taking classes that they truly, truly are passionate and really interested in because it just makes the whole high school experience a lot better. Um, so I'm going to um, go ahead and open the floor if anyone has any questions that they want to answer. I mean, ask that we can answer. If not, then you can put them in the chat. My wonderful counselors, I see that they have been responding to the chat. Thank you, Mr. Villarreal and Ms. Peters. Um, please make sure before you leave, um, replace a link in the chat for the sign in and for you to do an evaluation is really quick. It only takes a minute or less. Um, please just fill out the form. Any questions that we can answer? Uh, yes, I have a quick question. Sure. Um, uh, will, will this pre presentation or a brief outline be available for parents, maybe on the counselor website? Great question. So I'm actually recording this meeting. And so what I would do is, yes, ma'am, I will place the recording link on the counseling website and then I will include it in our February counselor newsletter. So you should be getting like a text message about the February counselor's newsletter and it will, yeah. have, it will have the link to this presentation for parents who could not make it today. Because I know, Thank you. yes, ma'am, I know it's a lot of information. So it's going to be worth going back and replaying it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. 
Um, question. So my son got uh, invited to the early college. Is, is it the same or what's the difference? So this present this presentation is not for early college high school. This is just the traditional high school route. So this is for students who are going to North Shore ninth grade, um, tenth grade, eleventh and twelfth grade. So this does this is not for um, the early college. So it's not even close to that. I don't want to say that it's not close. Um, okay. Yeah, go ahead, Ms. Peters. Hello. Um, when it's regarding the information as for the end of course exams and the track as far as receiving their diploma, those things are the same. The difference with early college high school and the traditional route is that um, students that do early college, that they could get um, certifications in various programs that they have over there but they will be they will be doing the same test to go to university right yes they will get yes. the opportunity also to go to the university yes ma'am most definitely yes ma'am and it, it should be matching uh for the the credit unit uh, the credit to graduate from high school because they need to earn their high school degree as well right yes ma'am it's just that extra the extra classes to get a certificate Correct. You are correct. Yeah, I just want to make sure he has the same opportunities because, yeah. you know, if, I, if he misses this one and it was better than the other one, that's what I'm trying to avoid. Yes, ma'am. The um, major difference is with the early college high school, right now they don't offer any extracurricular activities. So if your child was participating in choir or band or wanting to do athletics or even dance or cheer, they won't have that opportunity at early college, high school, but the academic piece is the same. Oh, okay. Thank you for answering my question. <laughs> yes, Ms. Cruz. Have a great day. You too. Thank you, Ms. Peters. <laughs> great questions. Anyone else have any questions? Okay, well, if not, um, that concludes this meeting. I'll stay on for a couple more meetings just in case a question pops up. But if we do ask that you complete the evaluation, please. Again, this meeting will be recorded. The link will be shared. We'll put it on the counseling website, and it will also go out in the February counselor's newsletter. So you'll be looking for that in the next uh, early next week. <laughs> early next week. Um, thank you all for attending this meeting. Um, I hope you have a great rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, please click on the link in the chat if you can, please, and complete the um, evaluation for us. Thank you. I'm sorry, I can't find the link. Oh. Hold on, we'll repost it. <laughs> I just reposted it in the chat. Got it, thank you. Yeah. You thank welcome. you. <laughs>